Yes, thanks, Sam. Yes, I got them. Oh, they're swell. They're right here on the desk. What? Well, why don't you come and see me? You know where the city hall is. Okay. So long. Flowers when you're born, and flowers when you die. I'll bet they'll be the last you'll ever get on this job. My name's Brad MacArthur. I know it. Just drop by to say hello. I usually make it a point to be friends with the DA. So I've heard. And if there's ever any little thing I can do for you, just say the word. Yeah. There is something, but you won't like doing it. Yeah? What is it? Get out of town and stay out. So you're going to be the new broom, huh? Start right in with that old act about cleaning up the town. And the first item under public improvements is to have you towed out of town on a garbage wagon. Listen, man, take my tip. Just relax. You can't get me. Others before you have tried it, it can't be done. I am the biggest businessman in this town. Well, it just happens that the people who elected me don't agree that your trip joints and gambling rackets come under the heading of business. Lane, I've got a lot of people on my payroll. People that this town or government would have to support if I didn't. And I pay out a lot of dough in taxes too. What's the matter with that kind of business? That's not the kind we want in this town. That's a funny angle. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm only helping them have a good time. Hey, Elaine, I'm in the entertainment business. And I got my start as an orphan. I've been yelled at by cops ever since I've been a kid. And nobody ever gave me a thing but a kick in the pants. But get this straight, Lane. Nobody ever took anything away from me, either. And now, my bankroll says I'm head man in this town. All right. Being an orphan doesn't justify what you're doing. I was one, too. I've had it just as tough. I've had to fight every inch of the way. My life hasn't been as soft as Mama O'Hara's cream puffs. Did you say Mama O'Hara? Yeah. Mama O'Hara that used to run a little bake shop? Rest her soul. Hey, not many people would know what you're talking about. Boy, what cream puffs. Not in your mouth. And how we used to love to swipe them. I knew there was something familiar about you. You're from Sumner Street. What of it? Well, I used to hang out with the Classy Street gang. I remember now. I used to knock your ears down every day or two. Remember? Yeah, I remember. But it happened to be the other way around. Oh. Well, no matter. Let's shake on it. All right. It's a grudge fight. No, that doesn't enter into it. In closing you up, I'm merely obeying the orders of the people who put me here. In closing me up? Don't make me laugh. With my dough, it can't be done. I got a lawyer to keep me out of trouble. A lawyer I pay more dough to in a week than you make in a year. Nevertheless, I'm closing you up. And I'll open right up again. I've been raided before, and your cops have broken up my places. And I've spent a lot of dough in fines, too. By the way, Lane, I'm open now. One of these days, your foot will slip. You'll do something that even all your money can't get you out of. And then I'll move in on you. You hope. And when that day comes, it'll give me the greatest pleasure to prosecute you personally. And get your ears pinned back again, just like you used to on Summer Street. Well, I'm sorry, MacArthur. This is a busy day. I'll be seeing you again. In jail. And I'll be seeing you again, Lane. I'll come down and visit you on Summer Street, where you started from. So long.
you dope. Hi, Bill. Hi, Joe. Oh, hello. <laughs> How's everything? Just like that. Hello, Gil. Eleven thirty. I figured the DA's hatchet men would have been here by now to wreck the place. He's not that crude, Brad. He was one of the smartest lawyers in town. Don't forget you being paid to see that he's not smarter than you. Listen, all kidding aside, with him in office, something tells me that from now on I'm going to earn my money. For a change. What do you think he'll pull? Not a thing. Son of a riddle is that? He'll wait for you to pull something on yourself. That's much smarter, from his standpoint. You better get some good sharp spikes for your shoes, darling, so you won't slip. What is this? Where's my money? Where's that money? No more tonight, Mr. Evans. What do you mean, no more? I got a right to cash all the checks I want. That's his job to cash them for me. Who oh, does he think he is to tell me I can't do any more gambling? Oh, just let you play, folks. We'll take care of him. You'll take care of nobody. I'll take care of myself. And take your hands off of me. Listen, Mr. Evans, go home, will you? Come back some other night when you feel better and don't gamble anymore tonight. Oh, you think I'm drunk, huh? Well, nobody's going to cheat me and not give me a chance to win my money back. Where's the guy that owns this zip bracket? I'll tell him a thing or two. Tell Brad McArthur to come out here. Now wait. Leave me alone and take your hands off of me. <laughs> now come on. Take it easy, Mr. Evans. We'll take you to see Mr. McArthur. That's what I want. I want to see Brad McArthur. I want him now. I'd like to put him to sleep. Oh, you would, huh? You bring Brad McArthur here. I'll put him to sleep. Okay, okay, but let's go into the office. No, I want him here where everybody can see what kind of a place he runs. Now wait a minute. Leave Just... him alone, Joe. What's the trouble, Mr. Evans? Trouble? The big Brad McArthur wants to know what the trouble is. The guy that owns this jip racket. <laughs> Tell these bouncers to take their hands off of me or I'll clean out your joint and you're with it. <coughs> Joe, get an ambulance. Call a doctor quickly. Right. That'll kill him. You'll be lucky if he lives. What do you mean, I'll be lucky? You think I did that on purpose? I'm not thinking anything. You realize how serious this is, don't you? That's Judge Evans' son. It would look better if you went down to the district attorney now and gave yourself up before they send for you. What are you worrying about? It was an accident, wasn't it? You saw it happen, didn't you? The district attorney didn't see it. So what? The room full of people saw it. Brad, people have an unaccountable habit of forgetting what they saw on the witness stand. What a guy. Always worrying about losing cases for me. I get the angle. He tries to make the cases look tough, so you'll think he's earning all the money you pay him. I wish that were all over to it. Answer that, will you? Yes. Yes. Well, I'll see if he's here. Well, wait a minute. I'll see if I can find him for you. It's him. Who's him? The DA. Tell him I'm not here. Don't be a chump. All right, you talk to him. He asked for you. Hello? This is Brad MacArthur. Well, MacArthur, this does the trick. I told you your foot had slipped, but I didn't think it would happen so soon. Well, I'll drop by tomorrow morning and tell you all about it. Oh, no, you won't. My men are on their way to your place now to arrest you. Stop clowning, will you? You can't make that stick. What are you trying to tag me, as a public enemy? Well? Manslaughter, he says. How do you like it? I don't like it at all. Well, snap out of it. If I'm not worrying, why should you? Because I have sense enough to know that he might make that charge stand up. Never mind it. I'll stand by you to the end. Stand by me till the end? What, where am I going to, a funeral? Maybe you are. What, on a manslaughter charge? And you call yourself a liar? <laughs> the charge can be changed. So can that laugh of yours. 
Linda. Go part of your nose. I think there's a couple of strange guys coming up in a few minutes. Good morning, Summer Street. How's the legal genius this morning? Well, MacArthur, I've had your bail set at $20,000. Oh, no, no, Mr. District Attorney. That's too high. Make it 10. Oh, I'll leave him alone. How do you want it, cash on the line? Not that I care, but I don't think you realize how serious your situation is. Nothing serious to a guy with enough dough. I wish I could hold you without bail before I send you to prison. Prison? What for? An accident? Will you stop trying to be funny? I told you I'd put you out of business and send you up the river. And that's where you're headed. You know, I think you've been reading those success stories. Where you stick to something until you're stuck with it, and it sticks you. There's the bail. Hey, and there's plenty more where that came from. Even though it was an accident. So long, Summer Street. See you around. Uh, Not for long, if I can prevent it. If. Did you ever hear of Robin Hood? Yeah. What about him? Well, from now on, you're going to be Robin Hood. You mean I'm going to wear green tights with a little feather in my hat and I go around with a bow and arrow shooting people? No, Brad. You see, Robin Hood was supposed to rob the rich to give to the poor. Now, wait a minute, girl. I've got a lot of dough, but I'm not going to throw it around a confetti. You're going to throw some of it away. Between now and the time your trial comes up, the public must be educated to think that you're a hero, not a heel. Who thinks I'm a heel? The district attorney. And he's going to do everything in his power to make the public think so, too. So he thinks I'm a heel. Can't you understand that from his standpoint, the DA is right? and that you're going to get 10 years or more, unless I find a way to stop it. Don't talk like that, will you? I'm not yellow, but the thought of the big house gives me the shivers. Lane has a very good chance of sending you there. What's his idea of picking on me? Because in the eyes of the law, you're a big shot criminal. And with public opinion back of him, Lane can put you away. So I'm a criminal, huh? Yes. What a screwy world. Man named Reynolds waiting to see me. Send him in. Brad? I've hired a publicity man for you. A publicity man? I've got my face smeared on every paper in the country for killing a guy accidentally and you hire me a publicity man? Some of the biggest men in business employ publicity agents to change the public's opinion of them. And you feel second this is going to help me. Hello, Collins. Mr. MacArthur, this is Clint Reynolds, the finest publicity man that money can buy. That ought to make him good. From now on, you'll do exactly as Mr. Reynolds advises. And like it. OK, so he's the commander. What are the orders? Undoubtedly, you've given the situation some thought since I talked to you. I have. As a matter of fact, I've mapped out a complete campaign. And if MacArthur here does exactly what I tell him to, I'll have public sympathy so in his favor that the DA will be coming up here and apologizing for having arrested him. Am I a criminal, he says. Yes, Brad McCarthy, you are. Chief, for the love of Mike, is there some way this stuff can be stopped enough to turn an honest man's stomach? Why stop him? 
This mug's being built up into a saint, being gilded and put up on a pedestal. I'll pull him off his pedestal at the right time. Yeah, if we ever get to trial with him. Ed, I thought I knew something about law, but his lawyer has more tricks to postpone trials than I ever heard of. Meantime, public headache number one becomes a hero, getting bigger by the minute. The people will love him. They'll start cheering him when he drives down the street. And they'll hate you for trying to put their pet hero in a cage where he belongs. The bigger they get, the harder they fall. And when we knock this Humpty Dumpty off the wall, nothing's going to put him together again. What's up with that feather? Well, where have you been? Why don't you get some good tires for your car? We had a flat coming over. Well, come on, we're late for those razors. Give me that thing. Where do you think you're going? Well, I uh, got myself a hat with a feather in it. Couldn't find the uh, green tights or the bow and arrow like Robin Hood. But we're going to the races. Oh, no, you're not. Who says we're not? Me, the brains of the outfit. The fellow who's whitewashing you for the jury. The guy you're paying 400 bucks a week to. 300 a week. No, I gave myself a race since I had the bright idea. What bright idea? We're on our way to the charity home for orphan children. We don't need any charity. No, for an orphan. What do you want with an orphan? Not for me, for you. You're going to adopt the kid. Not on your life. But it's only till after the trial. It'll be more ammunition for your lawyer to fire at the jury when your trial comes up. Don't you see the publicity angle? You're a rough diamond with a heart of gold. Just a big harmless orphan yourself. You visit the home, you, you fall for some kid, you adopt him. I bust a big story that you're going to leave all your money when you die. Why, it's colossal. It'll make you the greatest guy in the world. Hmm. Not bad. I like that. Especially the part about the rough diamond and the heart of gold. Yeah, you got something there. And after the trial, they can ship the kid right back to the school. Of course. Baby, I gotta beat it. Little business. For pleasure. What am I supposed to be in all this? Just your own sweet, charming self. That appeals to me. I'm sorry to break up your afternoon this way, but... Uh, I'll come back for you later. That's a date. How do you do? Mr. DeMont? Yes. Reynolds is my name. I know you. And this is Mr. MacArthur. Brad MacArthur. Oh, yes. I believe I've read about Mr. MacArthur. And what can I do for you? Well, for a long time, Mr. MacArthur has had a desire to, uh, to adopt a youngster, to select some boy out of an orphan's home. He's asked me to come along to help make the necessary arrangements. Well, we appreciate your generosity, Mr. MacArthur. But the regulations for adopting a boy are very strict. I won't violate any of your regulations. I'll give the boy a swell home and furnish all the money that he needs. I have no doubt of that. But you see, it's rather delicate to explain. But it's a matter of your background. Your trial coming up. What difference will that make? I'm up for manslaughter because of an accident. So I understood from the newspapers, but that doesn't change the situation. All right. You don't have to stall around. In other words, in my language, I'm not good enough to adopt a kid. In a manner of speaking, yes. It's just that some narrow-minded members of our board of directors might think that you are not, uh... You mean that I'm not the right kind of a guy to adopt an orphan? That possibly would be the decision of our board. In fact, I'm sure it would. Okay, that settles that. Uh, Come on. Thank you. Ah, uh, what a screwy idea. See my poison, Ivy? I'm a right guy. I'll give a lot of dough away. And I'll hire a lot of people and pay them good money. You guys tell me an idea to adopt a kid. Boys, I don't like the idea. And it sounds okay. I'm willing and able to give that kid anything he wants. And some old stuff shirt comes along and gives me the runaround. I'd like to see the kid that guy'd raise. It's too bad, but I can see his point. That would have been just what the doctor ordered. Your jury would have eaten it up at the trial. My jury, my trial. If you keep on talking about that, I'll stay in trial in my sleep. Now lay off of me. Well, 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 now don't worry about it. It won't do you better good to worry. Who's worried? I'm just tired hearing about it, that's all. Well, I'm glad one of us isn't worried. I am. Hey, I thought this trial was in the bag. <laughs> From the way he's talking, it, uh, it seems that you're the one holding the bag. Thank you, sir. Hey, mister! 
gave me a dime. Yes, yeah, so I did. I forgot to give you a change. I thought it was a nickel. I used to make mistakes like that when I was a kid. I guess I must be slipping. Here. Well, thanks. Why didn't you keep it? A thing like that might ruin my business. Have you much of the business to ruin? Four dollars a week. Once I almost hit five. Well. So you see, I can't take chances. No, no, not with a going concern like yours. I should say not. How old are you? I don't exactly know. I'm young, but I'm old for my age. I wish you'd come up to my office. I have a business proposition I'd like to talk over with. Can it wait till I finish selling the latest edition? Yes, I think it can. Here's where to come. Colin, attorney at law. Attorney at law. Oh, that's highbrow for lawyer, huh? Yes. I'll be expecting you. Okie doke. Bobby, if you took a new job, do you think your parents would object? They couldn't. They're dead. Oh, I'm sorry. Me too. Where do you live? I got a room of... I got a room. You mean you live by yourself? You didn't think I was married, did you? No. No, not on four bucks a week. Bobby, I have a job for you. It pays six dollars a week. Is there any chance for promotion? Excellent. What kind of a job is it? Your duties will be quite varied and interesting. Yeah? And you can start immediately. Sir? Immediately. Right now? Certainly. Can I have some time to think it over? Yes. Yes, I guess so. Well, bye. Call me up when you decide. Yes, sir. Bye. Bobby, if this job pays you more than selling newspapers, just what is it that's worrying you? Well, working for myself, I'm sure of four bucks every week. Right. But how do I know this guy Collins can put out six bucks a week? I think I can assure you, Bobby, that Collins is well able to keep up your six bucks a week. That's all I want to know. Thanks, and so long. Bye, Bobby. Let me know how you come out. There's the address. I'll see you there later. And here's a little advance on your first week's salary. How long will it take me to walk there? To walk? Well, that would take about three hours. You better take a streetcar now that you're making more money. Gee, I forgot. Funny how you get used to pinching pennies. I just can't get used to having money. Well, thanks, Mr. Collins. And don't forget the address. It's Franklin Boulevard, and the number is 487. keep you guys off. Look at what's talking. Ah, go on and beat it. Oh, yeah? Says who? And who well? Says me, and that's plenty. How would you like a nice pop in the snoot? From you, I wouldn't even feel it. Look, somebody's coming! What are you guys doing here? 
Don't you know it's against the law to fight? Ah, uh, what'd you have to butt in for? I had him licked in a minute. Hey, aren't you afraid you'll get smacked on the chin? No, I'm not as scared I'll get smacked on the chin or anything else. And what's it to you? Tough guy, huh? All right, get out of here with the rest of those legs. Now, beat it. Beat it yourself, or I'll let you have a right in the mush. Well, now, uh, hold everything, pal. Let's talk this thing over. Looks as though you might have been the one who started that last fight. Maybe it was, but you know nobody else is gonna butt in where I'm working. Where you what? Come on, give me that again. I come over here to start to work, and I catch a couple of guys smearing the place. And then you have to come along and butt in. So you wake here, huh? Who gave you the job? If you must know, Mr. Collins, the lawyer. He said a friend of his lives here. Now scram. Well, if you don't mind, I live here. My name's Brad MacArthur. Brad MacArthur? The racketeer? Oh, golly. Gee, am I in a spot? Hey, where do you get that racketeer stuff from? I can read, can I? I've seen the papers. Come on in, sir. We'll talk this thing over. You ain't gonna give me the works, are you? And I don't think I can handle you. Oh, boy. You ever been in a place like this before? Yeah, once. But I got chased out. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Exhibit A. Well, for crying out loud, Brad, have you been to the zoo? Oh, lay off, will you? Looks like you brought home one of the monkeys. What are you trying to do, be funny? Well, young fellow, you were a long time getting here. Yeah, yes, sir. I've been busy selling my business. Brad, this is Bobby, your new companion and bodyguard. I think you can depend on him to look after your interests. Yeah, I found it out. Say, he's the real McCoy. He'll do plenty to help your cause when the trial comes up. I get it. He takes the place to the orphan, huh? Sure, it's a swell angle. The great Brad MacArthur takes homeless waif into home and heart. <laughs> the first thing we'll have to do is dress him up for the part. The first thing you'll have to do is give him a bath. And then fumigate the place. Well, at least I wash the dirt off my face, lady. I don't cover it with a lot of powder. You're a fresh little kid. Glad I met you. Where are you going? Kissing six bucks a week goodbye. Oh, no, you're not. Hey, Linda, you leave this girl alone. Don't worry. I wouldn't touch him with a ten-foot pole. How about it, Lug? We'll get you some new clothes and dress you up so they won't recognize you. Gee, a new suit. I'll probably think. <laughs> <laughs> Nice little number, don't you think so, sir? What do you mean, number? The clothes are all right, if that's what you mean. But there's one guy I'll never wear a number. How do you like him, Lug? Gee, swell. I wouldn't know myself nowhere, even if I met me. <laughs> all right. We'll take all these. Oh, thank you, sir. No. But I'm afraid I can't change this. It's a rather large bill, you know, sir. Well, just forget it. Take yourself a trip around the world. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. That's very generous of you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Well, I thought you were going to faint. I nearly did. Boy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can't count no farther. Well, thanks. Well, kid, even Linda will fall for you now. Linda? Is she coming here? No, we're going to meet her for lunch. I mean, boy, we are now late. She'll be mad as a barred owl. Can I stay here? She won't want me eating around where she is. Anyway, I ain't hungry. No, I don't give her that. All kids are hungry. You like Linda, don't you? I like them all. What do you want for lunch? Anything you got. What do you say? Well, how would you like uh, some Russian caviar and a great big juicy filet mignon? Ah, uh, swell. What flavor? All right, you got me. <laughs> what a guy. Just what I thought. You stand me up while you tell him funny stories. Do you realize I've been waiting an hour for you? Do you realize he's been waiting all his life for these clothes? Yeah. Look at the little clothing store dummy. I was afraid of that. Well, I think he looks like a little gentleman. Maybe he does to you. 
but I don't like him. I don't want any part of him. Next thing I know, you'll be making mud pies with him. Brad, this ain't gonna work. I'm resigning the job. What's the matter with you? Can't you take it? You're asking me to take an awful lot for six bucks a week. Oh, forget it. You too, Linda. You leave this kid alone. You see Maggie on that lunch deal, kid. Come on. Get your tickets out, all aboard for Cincinnati and Chicago and all points west. Pardon me, but I think you forgot New York. And New York, all aboard. Now, wait a minute now, you... Can I think back up? Sure. Whoop! Well, how do you like that? Shall I start it now? Well, let's wait till people get on first. All aboard! Pull your ears in, you're going through a tunnel. See if you can stop it at the station. Whoop! You're an engineer. Oh, boy. Say, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? It sure is. Well, Lug, it's time you get a load of sleep. Oh, no, I don't dare to. Why not? I might wake up and it'll all be a dream, just like it always is. You know, it's funny how being so awful happy kind of gets you down. Yeah, I know how you feel. Sort of get a lump in your throat, huh? Yeah, I don't know how to say it. It's the first time in my life I've ever had anything given to me. Come on, Luke. <clears throat> Come on, go to bed. All right, in you go. Hey, aren't you going to take that robe off? No, I just got it today. Well, okay. Brad. What? Don't let this be a dream, please. It's no dream, kid. That's all yours. See you around. So long. What kept you? Oh, I was trying to get out of Ronnie's train. Now, isn't that too, too lovely? Brad, remember, adopting this kid was a publicity gag. You're not supposed to devote your life to it. Oh, Linda, you ought to come up and see the kid with these toys. Brad, are you going goofy? Can you imagine me looking at toys? Oh, well, it'll do you an awful lot of good to see that kid's face. Well, I never thought you'd be sap enough to let a kid put anything over on you. Can't you see he's just playing you for what he can get? I don't believe that. That kid's on a level, and I like him. All right. Go up there and try it. Tell him you're taking all his junk away from him and see what he'll do. Linda, don't ask me to cross that kid. I couldn't do it. You're afraid to try it. I've got $50. It says he'll walk out on you. All right. It's a bet. You want to come up and watch? No, darling. I'll take your word for it. Boy, oh boy, can I tear up the track. Practically burning up behind me. Get me up there. Come on. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, I was just trying it out. Do you mind? No, it's okay. How's the old chin, fella? Is it made of glass? Of course not. Why? I will. Can you take one right on the button? Can't if I have to. Okay. All this stuff's got to go back the first thing in the morning. Gee. Just got some bad news. Yeah? Yeah, I thought I had a lot of dough, but somebody cleaned me out. I'm flat broke. That's tough. Well, guess that lets me out. What do you mean? Can't stay here if you're broke. Why not? I just can't. I'd better get back to selling papers and making four bucks a week before they come to take all this away. You mean you're going to run out on me just because I'm flat? Sure, shouldn't I, if I can make some dough? I suppose so. Okay. 
You win. I ought to have my head examined. I thought that kid was on a level. Red! Here. What's that? Some dough I've been saving. Eight dollars. What am I supposed to do with it? If you're broke, you can use it, can't you? Okay, scram. Well, then I don't think I'll go out tonight. I, I've suddenly developed a headache. That's just fine. I'll call Clint. He'll be glad of the chance. Yes, then he'll have the headache. Where do you think you're going? I'm not going anyplace, just getting my things together. Well, let's stand here, and so are you. No fooling? No fooling. I was only kidding when I told you I was broke. Gee, you had me scared. What'd you do that for? Just want to see if you're a right guy. A right guy? Yeah. What's that? Well, uh, fellow that sticks to you when you're in trouble and keeps his mouth shut. Keeps his mouth shut, huh? Yeah. No matter what happens? No matter what happens. You've got to work at being a right guy. You think if I try real hard, I'll ever be a right guy? You were born a right guy, kid. You proved that when you gave me this dough. Then everything's Jake? And everything's Jake. <laughs> Come on. Let's get to going to New York. All right, I'll put her in high. Put her in high. Give it up, boy. Give her what I get. In case of goodness, and me in the middle of a pie. Now, where's them Filipini boys? What's paid to open the doorbells with a smile? Hello, Maggie. Brad here? He went downtown. Did he say when he'd be back? No, he don't tell me everything. You can wait in there if you like. Probably out buying a couple of hotels for the kids, just for a surprise. Yes, uh, Linda, how long are you going to stick around this setup? Just long enough to pry Brad loose from a wee dough. You know, we better watch our step. You're liable to get wise about you and me, I mean. Brad's too busy with his own worries. What are you doing here? You're supposed to marry Brad, ain't you? Why, oh, you little sneak. You're nothing but a double-crossing old two-timer with a new paint job. Oh, you... How dare you talk to me like that? Hey! What's going on here? This little two-legged rat insulted me. What'd you do that for, kid? Well, I asked you something. You gonna answer me? Come back here. I thought you and Linda were going to get along. What happened? You heard me. What happened? Can't tell you. Why not? Are you going to tell me that I have to knock your block off? No, Come on. Stop that, Brad. If you hit him, you'll have me to hit too. He's done nothing. He saw him kissing and hogging, and he called her an old paint job. How do you know? Oh, I was there myself. I saw it with my own two eyes. And it ain't the first time. Okay, Maggie. Now tell him what sort of lies that kid's gonna hand Brad about us. Now, honey, don't you worry about Brad. I'll take care of him. Father. Brad, you're not going to believe a pack of lies that kid told you. I'll get even with you just the last thing I do. Hurrah! Think I'll ever make a team? Uh, boy, you're a lead pipe pinch. Think I'd make a good quarterback? Fine. Yeah. Let me see your center one. Okay. 
Signal, 174, 76, hi. Atta boy. Hey, whose side are you on, anyhow? Yours? Say, I bet you're gonna miss playing like this when you get sent up there, ain't you? What do you mean, sent up there? What do you know about that? I read it in the papers. They said they're gonna try and send you up to the pen. Ain't they? They'll never get me up there. Why won't they? I don't know, but skip it. Brad MacArthur. Oh, I thought I'd find you here. Say, Mr. Collins is downstairs to see you. Collins, huh? Oh, sure, and what a mess you make of this room. Hello, Collins. What's the good word? The DA is preparing to give you the works, Brad. Oh, you're kidding. How can he do that? He's demanding, and what's more, he's going to get. A blue ribbon jury, hand-picked by himself. You mean to tell me he's going to pick people I can't pay off? The jury will be selected from a panel of 300 leading and upright citizens. Persons of unimpeachable character. That can't be reached by a bribe. Uh, go on. You mean to tell me there's 300 people in this town that can't be bought with enough cash on the line? Strange as it may seem to you, it's a fact. Well, what are you going to do about it? I'm resigning from your case. What do you want, Mordo? No. It's because there isn't a ghost of a chance to win your case. You're crazy. You were crazy when you tossed out Linda and her boyfriend. That choked off your publicity just when you needed it the most. Right now, you're poisoned. The public's up in arms against you. A lot of church people are clamoring for action. And you're the target. No. It's too unpopular for me to handle. Well, uh, as my former lawyer, I don't suppose you mind giving me a little advice. What happens if I don't show up at the trial? You forfeit your bail and become a fugitive from justice. They'll get you. No, I wouldn't try that. That's my advice. Now you're on your own. And you're on yours, you yellow mouthpiece. Now get out of here. Go on, get out. Maggie. Yes, Brad. Come here. All right, I'll be with you in a minute. My legs are just young as they were. What's on your mind, Brad? That little jalopy of yours run? What do you mean, jalopy? It's a good automobile. Hop short can run like some plastics after it. Well, I'm going to swap yours for mine. Put some of my duds in the back of your car. Brad McCarthy, you're up to something I am thinking. Well, stop thinking. Well, you can't take the boy with you where you're going. Who said anything about taking a boy? Then what's to become of him? I'll see that he gets a break in life. A good education. And what would you like the lad to be when he grows up to be a fine man like yourself? Anything but a lawyer. And who's going to perform this marvelous miracle? You are. Yes, but what will I be using for money? I'm going to take care of that, too. Oh, very well, Brad. You can depend on me. On your court. Brad, you know that boy, he... He worships you. He'll want to be going with you. How are you going to take care of that? Oh, I'll figure out some kind of a story to tell him. I'll see that he changes his mind about me. Brad MacArthur, of all the men, contemptible, a grand, elegant fellow that you are. I love you like my own son. You're low down, Spalpeen. Hey, Maggie, will you stop all that Irish baloney? What's this? Blarney, you mean, not baloney, you ignoramus. Say, this is a peak. Kid, I'm shoving off. I'm leaving you here with Maggie. Where are you going? It's none of your business. You and I have come to the end of the line. Oh, no, I go where you go. Well, I just said you're not. I thought you said we were going to stick together. Yeah, stick together until you mess things up. I can't trust you anymore. I ain't done nothing. No, you ain't done nothing. You broke Linda and I up, didn't you? You call that nothing? But I thought she was two-timing you. 
You knew what you were doing. I was only trying to be a right guy, helping a pal. I didn't know. You said that... Ah, uh, never mind the alibi. Ah, uh, gee, I didn't mean to bust you up. I didn't know that I was doing anything wrong. Honest, I didn't. Ah, uh, pipe down. You're a squealer, and I can't get you out of my sight quick enough. I didn't mean to be a squealer. Cross my heart, pal. Now, nah, don't give me that pal stuff, either. Oh, gee, I'd just about die if I wasn't where you was. Now, keep your hands off of me. You and I are through, see? You, th you said we were pals. You're my only pal. You can't leave me. You must be... You must be crocked. You've been drinking. Oh, yeah? Well, that ought to make you believe me. Well, you little pest. How did you get in there? I don't know. I must have walked my sleep or something. Yeah? <laughs> Were you in there all night? Yeah, I guess so. After you walked out on me, I went right to sleep and woke up in the back of Maggie's old rattle trap. And after all the trouble I had of getting rid of you. Well, miss, it's going to be a long walk back to town. Oh, you can't do that, Brad. Maybe I could help you. Can't you keep me? I won't get in your way. What did you use for air down there? Oh, I just held back breathing. Well, didn't you get knocked around? Well, it wasn't so bad till you came to that big bump. And then I got it right on the shoulder. Does it hurt? Kinda. No? Sorta. All right, get in there. No, in the front seat, I mean. And the first good spot we come to, I'm throwing you out, see? Anything you say. Lakeside Inn. How about it, Lug? You want to try it? Sure. Gee, it's got a lake and everything. Hey, Lug. Come here. Keep the lip button up, see? Oh, I got gotcha. you. How do you do? Hello. Something I can do for you? Yes. Can we get a room here? We're really not open for the season. You're the first guest. You mean to say that you're here alone? Yes. There won't be other guests here for a week. It'll be lonely. Well, that won't break my heart. Would you like a room overlooking the lake? Anything will do me, miss. I've seen lakes. I haven't. I'd like one. Then a lake you shall have. Will you sign the register? I 
have a room that will make you feel right at home. I doubt it. Will you come with me? Here we are. Gee, look at the light. Or better, Steve. Are there any fish in it? Yes, thousands of them. Just waiting to be caught by little boys. You know, I bet you could fish right out of this window. Not me, I don't know how. Well, I bet your daddy does. No, I never fished in my life. Well, then I see where I'm going to have to teach you both. Well, yeah, sure. I hope you'll be comfortable. We'll be all right, sister, thanks. The name is Alice Martin. Alice, for short. Okay, Alice. Say, tell me something. How did a swell dish like you run to that old fish? Well, you see, I inherited a liking for it. My father started this place and ran it up until last year. This is the first year I'm opening without him. He passed away. Well, I gotta hand it to you. You've got a lot of courage, sweetheart. Thank you. Say, do I like her? Do you? <sighs> I like them all. She's pretty and clean. Uh, but she hasn't got much class. No class. But if she had some class, could we stay, maybe? Hey, what are you driving at? N nothing. Well, what did the mayor say about the reward? Ten thousand is all right with him. Well, that ought to turn up a carter pretty quick. He can't remain undercover forever. He's going to make it hot for the poor cop who finds him. Yeah, that bird would shoot it out with his own grandmother. Well, hello. Can I help you with anything? Not now. Uh, could you use a couple of men around here per permanently all the time? I mean, a man and a half. You, for instance? Me and my old man. Not my old man, Bobby. My father. Does he like it here? Yes, and he likes you, too. Well, it's important that my guests should be pleased. He don't say much, but I can tell he sure is pleased. I like you both, too. That's a pretty dress you have on. Glad you like it. Hair looks nifty, too. My, you're full of compliments this morning, aren't you? You know, you don't dress like a girl I used to know. Was she your girl, Bobby? Oh, no, she was Brad. I mean, my father's girl. And uh, her name was Linda. Boy, was she a classy dresser. She used to put red stuff on her lips. And she was powdering all the time. Bobby, would you like me better if I dressed that way and use more makeup and maybe some lipstick? Nah. But Brad would. He likes them when they dress up lots. You see, these are my working clothes. But I do have some clothes like hers. You do? Sure. Oh, boy, put them on and show Brad. He could go for you. He likes swell lookers. That's an idea, Bobby. But we'll have to wait for another week or so until I get some more help around here. Then I'll dress up. Four, five, eight R. Hello, Mr. Wilson. This is Alice Martin. Those rugs and dining room chairs I ordered should be delivered up here not later than Saturday. Will you take care of it? Thank you. Who are you talking to? Just down the village. You know, that isn't like the telephone we have at home. Can you talk anywhere on that phone? Yes, most anywhere, but you'd better not try it. You want to go down the village with me? I'd better not. My father might want me. All right, I'll be right back. Can I talk to the telephone at Brad MacArthur? It's at Milford. Yes, I guess so. I want to speak to Maggie. I don't know, just Maggie. She, she works there.
Hello? Who, Maggie? This is Bobby. Oh, Bobby, isn't it great I can talk to you? Gee, I'm lonesome for you. I wish you were up here. I, are you with Brad? Gee, you had me scared. I didn't know what had happened to you. Say, there's a swell place to ride bicycles up here. I wish I had mine. Would you send it to me? Why, why, of course I'll send it to you. But, but where are you? I'm at, uh, Lakeside Inn. Well, wait a minute, Bobby. I'm so excited. I must get a pencil and put it down. Now, tell me again. What is it? Lakeside Inn. Lake Veal. <laughs> All right, Bobby. I'll send it to you. I gotta go now. Bye. <sighs> And now we come to the latest developments in the escape of Brad MacArthur, who is under indictment for manslaughter. The police are positive the fugitive could not cross the state line without being recognized. They are certain he will be captured very soon. Gee, your radio, can I turn it off? Leave that thing alone. What's the matter? I'm sorry, kid. I didn't mean to yell at you, but this place is getting me down. I gotta get out of here. I can't dodge those cops much longer. What had happened if they did catch you? They'd try to slam me in jail for a long time. How long a time? One to ten, maybe. What does that mean? Maybe three years for good behavior. Three years? I'd be a man then. Yeah. That's a long time. Maybe it'd be better that way. Then they wouldn't chase you anymore. Well, that's one way of doing it, but that's not the way I'm going to do it, see? Well, what do we do? Shall I pack our bags? Look, kid. I've got to go on. And I've got to leave you here. No, Brad, no. Oh, now look here. You said you'd do anything I asked you, didn't you? You're not going to let me down now, are you? No, but... But what? But can't I go part way with you? Look, I'll make you a proposition. If I stay a couple of days longer, will you let me go on alone? And you promise not to talk about it anymore? Yes, I promise. Okay. It's a deal. Brad. <laughs> will you tell Maggie that I want to see her? Maggie, have you heard anything from Brad? Sure, I haven't heard anything of Brad MacArthur since the day he left here. And if you'd been keeping your eye on the newspapers, you'd find they don't know much about him either. Hmm, of course, when he disappeared so suddenly, very naturally, I was worried about him. Ah, you don't fool me any. Your only worry is that they won't catch him. Well, no, if you believe in me, I'll be going about my work. Well, I'll drop in from time to time just to see if you've heard anything. Oh, you can save yourself the trouble. Because if I did hear anything, you'd be the last person I'd be telling. Oh, thank you, Maggie. Goodbye. Sit here. Imagine Brad MacArthur being chump enough to let me know where he is. That his conscience was hurting him. Where is the letter? I tore it up. It was personal. Here's the address. Oh, boy, in another five minutes, I'd have been kicked out of my hotel. And some people say there's no Santa Claus. Well, I'll see that you get a substantial part of the reward money. How about a substantial part right now? Or I don't eat. Unless, of course, I hawk some of these, and naturally, sentiment wouldn't let me do that. Naturally. I'll see there's a check waiting for you this afternoon. Uh-uh. That's where you're wrong. I'll be waiting for the check. Bye-bye. In case I don't see you again.
Call up the airport and arrange for a special plane. I want them to land me as close to Lakefield as they can. And phone the local police at Lakefield to meet me. I'll bet this is the greatest day this kid ever spent in his life. Yes, I've noticed. And how he treasures each second, as though it were his last. And I've also noticed that you've been watching him with the same thought. What do you mean by that? Well, for one thing, I know your name isn't Jim Lancaster. I've known from the first that you were Brad MacArthur. Well, don't bother to deny it. I do see the papers, and I can recognize faces. All right. I'm Brad MacArthur. What do you intend to do with the information? I didn't think it was necessary to do anything about it. You don't look like the sort of fellow who would go around murdering people. I saw how nicely you treated the boy, and I presumed you had some problem to work out. Well, that's the first bit of sense I've ever heard from any woman. That is a compliment from you. Of course, you must give yourself up. You can't spend the rest of your life running away from the police. Well, that's the wrong kind of advice to give a fellow like me. And in the meantime, what happens to that boy? Well, I promise him another day of fun, and then I move on. Then you're not going to take him with you? No, I can't. I've been trying to cook up some sort of a fairy tale to tell you so as I could keep him here. He needs someone like you. And you've needed someone like him? Yes. Someone like him. And you. I believe you mean that. For the first time in my life. Then... Then why don't you give yourself that chance? What, and spend the rest of my life in jail? Fred! I feel like a sap fishing in a swimming suit. Can't I take that boat out in the lake? Look, you. You keep out of that boat, and you stay out of that lake until you learn how to swim. How am I going to learn how to swim if you won't let me go in the water? Next week, there'll be some more guests around. There's sure to be someone to teach you how to swim. Oh, boy, that'll be swell. Then can I go out in the lake? Oh, you won't be here next week. I thought we shook hands on a deal not to talk about that anymore. Oh, Brad, I didn't mean to talk about it. I forgot. Let's shake again. Okay. All right, now run along and change that stuff if you don't like it. Okay, so long. You may be a past master of fooling other people, but you can't fool yourself. You'll never be able to run out and leave him. Boy! Front! 314, ice water. And don't trip on the stairs. Make it snappy! Why, how do you do? How would you like a nice lake with a room in it? How would you like a room with a lake in it? <laughs> uh, hello. Hi, what are you doing? Playing hotel. Where's Alice? She went down the store. How long ago? Not long ago. She said to tell you she'd be back soon. Hey, here comes somebody. All right, you two fellows get around the rear. And don't forget, he might shoot it out. How did that guy find out where I was? Somebody must have squealed. Who do you think it was? That's what I'd like to know. Say, kid, you didn't talk to any strangers, did you? Of course not. You don't think I'd squeal, do you? Maybe I've done it. How? When? Could they tell if you talked on the telephone? Who did you talk to? I talked to Maggie. She wouldn't tell. Yeah, that's how they found out, all right. I could only get that boat around the bend. I could get across the lake. Brad, let me take it there. Give me a chance to spur myself. 
You stay right here. Look, kid. Play dumb. Don't tell him a thing. I'm a natural for it. Nice room overlooking the lake. Where's the girl that's running this place? I'm running the place while she's down at the store. Who are you? I'm boss here while she's gone. Sonny, we're looking for a fellow. Brad MacArthur. Go right ahead and look for him. I ain't stopping you. Have you seen a big, tall guy around here? The only one I've seen since I've been here is Alice. Nobody's come in since I've been here. Now, Sonny, stop playing and answer our questions. I didn't ask you about a girl. I asked if you'd seen a man around here. I bet I know the fellow you mean. The one that always goes fishing. Yeah, where is he now? He's fishing. When's he coming back? You know how it is when a fellow goes fishing. How long ago did Alice leave? Long time ago. Well, I, I guess we better wait around until she gets back. Yeah, Sonny, where are you going? I'm going up to tell Alice you're here. Get a hold of him then. Come on, get a hold of the boy and I'll get a hold of him. Come on, oh. Here, get in the hand. Come on. Come on. Come on, come in. Get a hold of him. There you are. Give me a hold of your hand, Brad. Come on. Yeah, come on. There you are. I'm sorry they shot at you, MacArthur. Ah, oh, forget it. Let's get out of here. Are you all right? Yeah. Gee, they got Brad and it's all my fault. We didn't know the kid was in trouble. That was a fine thing you did, MacArthur. Never mind the medal on Sumner Street. I'm a rotten swimmer. I could have made it if I'd known how to swim. That's all right, Bobby. You did all right. Come on. But you got to change your clothes and dress that wound. What about your stop in the hotel? Forget it. I don't want that kid to see me. Come on. All right. Have it your way. They're taking Brad away. They can't do that. Bobby. Okay, Lug, forget it. You can't have 
have him. We can't take him. I'm sorry, Sonny, but we got to. Could have never caught him. He could have got away easy if it hadn't been for me. Yeah, that's right. Ain't you gonna do something, Brad? Alice, you make them do something. They're gonna take Brad away. Look, this is the way I want it. Don't go away, please, Brad. Look, pal. I gotta take this, see, to make things right first. Then I'll come back to you. Ask Alice, she'll tell you. Hey, you want me to do what's right, don't you? You're a right guy, aren't you? Sure. Well, then that's it. You do as I ask you. Let me even things up. You want it, Brad? Yeah. If you want it, it's all right with me. Okay. So long, Lug. So long. See you around. So long. <laughs>